And now we get to the last method for solving this problem of an object falling with drag, the calculus method, the most maths heavy method. I'm going to start off by going slowly and carefully through what it actually means for something to be the rate of change of something else. Now this is the fundamental definition of what calculus or differentiation actually means. This will be familiar to many of you, but we've been told repeatedly by students that this way of interpreting calculus is often not taught in schools. So we're going to go through it here because it's kind of crucial to the physics. Now we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So here we've got a plot of velocity against time, and the rate of change of this, so the change in velocity per unit time, tells us the acceleration. We know that's the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is measured in meters per second per second, so it's how many meters per second you change per second. So what is the acceleration here? What we could do is take the starting point and the ending point. Okay, so the velocity starts at zero and ends up at, hmm, what's that? It's probably about minus 37. So the acceleration is going to be equal to the change in velocity, which is minus 37 meters per second, divided by the number of seconds, which is 10. So that's minus 3.7 meters per second squared. OK, that's the acceleration. But hold on a minute, that's the acceleration on average from here to here. What about the acceleration in the first two seconds? So if we look two seconds in, we've gone from velocity of 0 to a velocity of, ooh, I don't know, about minus 18 maybe, minus 19, over two seconds. So now the acceleration equals, let's say, I don't know, minus 19 over... 2, which is about minus 9.5 meters per second squared. So we've got two very different accelerations. We could do another one. We could say, what's the acceleration between here at 6 seconds and at 10 seconds? Now the acceleration is once again the change in velocity that's gone from hmm, minus 34 to minus 37. So that's about uh, a minus 3 change over 6 to 10, that's 4 seconds. So that's about minus 0 0.75 meters per second squared. So this is a bit tricky. How do we know what the acceleration is? We know acceleration is the rate of change of speed. But it's constantly changing here because the acceleration over the entire thing is minus 3.7. The acceleration over the first two seconds is minus 9.5. The acceleration over the last four seconds is a pathetic minus 0 0.75. So if we want to work out what the acceleration is in F equals MA, what do we use? Acceleration over 10 seconds, over the first two seconds, over the last, or anything else? What we really need is to measure the acceleration not over some time interval, but at a point. So what's the acceleration here, at that point? But that's a bit tricky because acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. At a point, neither the velocity nor the time are changing. So how can you measure the rate of change of something at a point because at a point they're all the same? Well, that's where the fundamental concept of the limit comes in. So let's say you want to measure things at that point. Well, you can't. But you can measure it between this point and some other points. Let's say we pick our second point over here. We can measure over that the change in time, in this case, four seconds, and the change in velocity and measure the acceleration. But that's not going to be the same as acceleration at that point. So let's make the time shorter. Let's slide this point up. Let's slide it to over here. Now, we can measure the change over a smaller time. It's going to be more accurate, but it's still over a full second, so it's still not accurate enough. So let's slide this back up again. If we slide it up to there, we're now talking about the change in velocity and time over a very short period, getting much more accurate. But keep on sliding it up. And what we do is we slide the second point all the way up to, but not quite reaching the first point, and that's called taking the limit. 
So what we do is we've got our change in time, delta t, and our change in velocity, delta v. And so the slope, acceleration, is just equal to delta v over delta t. But that's the acceleration on average over this interval of time. The acceleration at that point is equal to what's called the limit as delta t tends to zero of delta v over delta t. This should be familiar terminology from your maths course. And what it means is we slide the second point up, up, up as close as we possibly can, but never quite actually reaching zero. And in the limit, we've still got two points, but the two points are infinitely close together, but not quite in the same place. The limit of that is equal to written down as dv by dt. And that's the fundamental principle of calculus. What that means is that limit is the slope of the tangent at this particular point. That's how you get the dt's and dv's as you slide the second point all the way up to the center. So that's the fundamental thing. Whenever we talk about rate of change, you can't define it at a point because rate of change is a change of one thing over a change of another, and they have to both change. But what we can do is we can measure it over an interval and shrink that interval, take the limit as that interval tends to zero, and for a reasonably well-behaved mathematical function, which pretty much all the functions we deal with in physics are, that turns into a dv by dt, the calculus concept.